What's up everybody, Knox Hutchinson here, and this time I'm really excited to talk to you about something because I've been, I don't know what I want to say here, experimenting with this fad that maybe you've heard about called podcasts lately. And I, I'm not a podcast person. I don't really listen to podcasts. I, you know, I, my initial impression when I heard about podcasts was like, who's got time for that, for like talk radio, basically. Uh, and then I listened to one and uh, the, it was called The Art of Network Engineering and I haven't stopped listening to that podcast. Now, I, I'll say I've, I've experimented with other podcasts and it's not quite for me, but The Art of Network Engineering was a podcast that has really had a lasting impression on me for a bunch of different reasons that I think we're going to get into throughout this segment. And I, I'm not going to, I could talk about it all night long right now just with me and the microphone, but with the, the special thing that you're seeing on the screen here is I actually have the people of the art of network engineering right here with me on the screen right now. We're doing a hangout and I thought it would be cool to bring them into the data Knox ecosystem. So that way y'all could get to know them and what their podcast is all about and why you should be listening to them too. So let's start off with some introductions. AJ, please introduce yourself. Knox, thank you so much for having us. This is incredible. I am AJ Murray. You can find me on Twitter at, at no blinky blinky. Funny story, AJ, while we're here, <laughs> Uh, I was I was typing a message to Jeff Kish, uh, one of our trainers at CVT Nuggets and our internal Slack channel. And I was saying, hey, there's a guy named AJ. You should follow him on Twitter at no blinky blinky. And I typed at no blinky blinky. And what happened is it autocorrected to at an internal female employee's name, kinky kinky. <laughs> and, and I sent it and I was like, well. It's been nice working with y'all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was All right, like, edit, out. edit, edit, edit. <laughs> was, oh, man. It wow. was uh, autocorrect, got the best of us. So. Okay, so what'd she say? <laughs> uh, luckily, that was in the private chat, and she didn't see it happen, and I That's immediately fair. edited. Even Jeff didn't see it happen, so I was like, well, but I warned everybody, if you're going to type at in Slack, make sure you look very closely at what it does. At <laughs> space, and then what you yes, want. At, so I ended yeah. up typing A-T, no blinky blinky. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's, anyways, funny story. All right, Aaron, take it away. Bring us into Aaron Engineer's world. Yeah, man, Aaron Engineered here, a uh, long-time listener, first-time caller. And I got to say that this is also our first time together, not just with you but just period in, on video so that's cool um uh, you get to see maybe like a little bit of a cross breeding as you would call it here with us and you you bringing the video aspect to us being you know in everybody's cars as they're you know either driving to work or the grocery store or whatever so maybe uh they could finally put a face to the name and they could see how ridiculous we look when we're talking to each other um <laughs> shout out to dan for buying a webcam but yeah, Aaron Engineered, you can find me everywhere on the internet, uh, everywhere books are sold. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right, Dan, howdy packet, new to Twitter. Tell us tell us about you and what you think about Twitter in your first couple weeks. Well, uh, to start off, I guess, uh, howdy. Um, but <laughs> I'm Dan Richards at Howdy Packet on Twitter. Um, I just started, I made a first video, what was that, last week, I think it was? Yeah. Wait, hold up, yeah. hold up. You made a video? A video, yeah, yeah, like dude, a, you didn't I, see the video. I actually no. did a um, FHRP, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what's it called in Twitter when you make multiple tweets though? A uh, like a twit longer, like a stream, like a uh, yeah. with like you, you did a sequence of tweets, like you replied yeah, one to of three, yeah, two yeah, three, yeah, three, like, three. He's learning, all, folks. Just give him a give him yeah, give him sorry, a minute. Guys. He'll sound I'm it out. Complete like social. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, we don't know what you're talking about, dude. Did you make a video or not? What's the video about, dude? Uh, HSRP. <laughs> okay. I had just you. I had just uh, finished watching Jeff Kish's uh, a thread. Yeah, thread. Thread. Yes. thread. There thread. we go. Yeah. yeah. I had to pull Thank it up you. to look. Yeah. <laughs> you googled it. Yeah. Uh, I had just finished watching uh, Jeff Kish uh, his on his encore um, playlist on CBT Nuggets, and I was like, all right, I can do this. I'm gonna just go ahead and lab it. And I videoed myself doing it and figured I'd share what I found out with the world. That That is that is the way to do it. That's yeah. literally how we all got started is we watched somebody else and then we're like, I could probably make, must make a recording. Yeah. And then so. how about, I mean, Jeff, man, he he is next level training. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, actually just, really enjoy his stuff. So, yeah, he, he makes I was me watching feel so stuff. inadequate. 
<laughs> you know, I wouldn't go that far. Don't be so hard on yourself. I was, and then this isn't a knock to Jeff, but I was watching his stuff earlier. I love it. First of all, I was watching um, your guys' encore, and it looked like he drew the short straw when it came to the wireless section. So, because uh, somebody had to do it. We know how yeah, you he guys and are. Jacob. And Jacob did some wireless too. He was good. okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't get that far. He, he was <laughs> actually. I don't even know what I, like I, I typed in the search bars. <laughs> True, and that's fair because I didn't go through the actual course like list. I actually just typed it in the search bar. Um, and I don't even remember what I typed, but I found some really cool stuff. So that was interesting. But anyway, cool. Yes, agreed. Kish is awesome. Andy, yeah. bring it home. Permit IP Andy. Andy, the one of the the coolest handles ever. <laughs> Thanks, Knox. Uh, thanks for having us on. Yeah, Andy Laptef. Uh, you can find me on all the socials at Permit IP Andy. Andy. Um, really excited to get to talk to you. This is uh, it's pretty exciting for us. Um, it's really cool. You're kind of feel like we're being interviewed by a celebrity or something. <laughs> <laughs> a little intimidating. So. You get a podcast. You get a podcast. <laughs> you get a podcast. <laughs> yeah, man. You get a Andy, video. You get Andy, a podcast. I don't know about you, but like my heart's pounding right now. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not nervous when we do the podcast, but right now I'm kind of, I feel like I'm on point here. Yeah, so, if, it, so if you're editing let, it and you hear it, do, 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 <laughs> let, let me say this. Like when I, when I listen to y'all's podcast, the reason why I like y'all's podcast is, uh, immediately it breaks down some sort of personal wall that happens between people. I think there's two types of people that you can have a conversation with. There's people that you would be honest about how your day was today. And then people that you would lie to about how your day was today. <laughs> and I feel like when y'all are talking or when we're talking immediately, I can have an honest conversation with you about how my day was and how my journey's been. So what I want to do, the next question that I want to set up is kind of along that lines, what does this podcast mean to each one of you individually? And we'll go around the horn in the opposite direction. Andy, what is this, what is the point of this podcast for you? Why are you doing this? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, when I started studying for the CCNA, whatever it was, eight or nine years ago. I wasn't aware of any community. I wasn't plugged into any support systems. Um, I pretty much felt like I was on an island. Somebody I work with mentioned the CCNA. I wanted to step up and out of the field you know, job that I had. And I had no idea where this was going to go. And you know, it was a year or two journey getting my CCNA. And a lot of the time, I didn't know if I was wasting my time. I didn't know if this was going anywhere. I just, you know, it seemed like a good idea, but it was also a leap of faith. So when AJ and the guys approached me to, you know, I wish this existed when I was getting started or trying to get into the field, because I, I feel like, and a lot of the feedback we've been getting, it's, it's a support system. Like you said, we're really honest and open and vulnerable. You know, the episode on failure plaques, like we're not afraid to tell you how many times we failed exams and how hard they are. And, but having the support, you know, of each other and helping the community, you know, for me, I think, I'm really just trying to give back to people coming up what I didn't feel I had when I started, if that makes sense. It does. And I think it's really, I really love that failure plaques episode too, because when you log into LinkedIn or Twitter, like, what do you see? You only see people who pass. You, you never see mm -hmm. people who fail. And legitimately every single one of us fails. So, and, and the people who do post that they fail, which is like once a quarter, you know, props to them for being so bold and vulnerable and saying like, look, I'm human. I know you are too. You're out there. <laughs> and that's a given on social media, right? It's like a curated reality. So it's, it's really easy to go on all the socials and, you know, that, that whole thing, that documentary just came out, like the social dilemma. It's proven like, <laughs> you know, they make you feel inferior. They make you feel crappy. And, and so, so yeah, it's, it's nice to have, you know, a network, a community of people who are vulnerable with each other. And like, wow, I just got my butt kicked again on that. You know, try again, guys. And then people tip <laughs> in and, it's it's been really nice um, yep. so far. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome, Dan. You're you're next on the list. Tell me why. What does this podcast mean to you personally? Why are you doing this? It, also, try to calm down when you say it, because like <laughs> your enthusiasm is destroying the entire mood right now. All right. <laughs> 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 so yeah. So for me, it was it a lot is kind of like what Andy said, you know, like when I was first starting down this path, I, I, I didn't really have a community at all. Um, and when we first started the group, 
like before the podcast. We 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 started the the Discord channel before the podcast, and when we started that, it my thing was how do we help people learn, you know, without having to obviously like getting paid resources and stuff like that is is definitely a must, right? I mean, you have to get books, you have to get videos, you have to all that kind of stuff. You have to do that, but how do we fill in those little gaps in between? Like if I have a question about something, I can't just reach out to CBT nuggets and be like, Hey, mm-hmm. I, I don't understand this part right here. So having that community there to be able to, cause, cause I mean, what are we up to now? Like 450 people in our discord channel? Yeah, almost 500. Yeah. So somebody in there is going to understand this concept. Right. And some, and, and everyone's been super helpful with, uh, you know, if any, any questions that come up, they've been helpful with that. So that was mm-hmm. one of the big reasons I wanted to do that. But now the podcast, um, for for myself, this is a major. I was, you were, you know, you're you're talking earlier about how uh, talking about how our day is going. I was just talking to AJ earlier today, and talking about some real feelings I have right now. <laughs> and uh, so you you were spot on with that. But um, one thing for me is I am super out of my comfort zone right now. <laughs> like, like I'm way out of my comfort zone. And you can see it. Look at everybody stare at Dan right no. now. <laughs> Dan, you're doing great, buddy. You're doing, you're doing great. great. No, I, I love, I absolutely love what I, lo- what you're saying. Like, yeah. it's, but and that's why he's such a good part of the show though. You know, absolutely. cause like, well, it's because, so like, relatable. Very. Yeah. Everything and I mean, like, that you're saying is relatable. Cause 100%. we all feel that way. At, at some point in every day, we feel exactly what you're saying. Exactly. And, and so uh, just more of a personal thing, this is a big major push for me to get out of my comfort zone, because I think I we it. all, when we get in these comfort zones with our safety blankets and stuff, we don't want to, we don't want to unravel out of the safety blanket. <laughs> you warm know? and snuggly. We don't want to get exactly. it out. Exactly. I so, like warm uh, and snuggly. Same. Yeah. <laughs> I can pee there and no one will say anything. Yeah. <laughs> with a little, little cup of coffee. and <laughs> <laughs> So, and just to add on to that too, um, about helping the community, like when, when Aaron reached out to Boson and they actually came back with like discounts and stuff, it was like, what are we doing? <laughs> like we're actually <laughs> providing, you know, resources <laughs> to other people at a, you know, a cheaper cost basically. And we're helping them out. Right. You know, cause not everybody will go drop $500 on equipment, books and m- materials. It's not easy for them to do that. And I, yep. I completely understand that And any kind of discount we can get them and stuff like that. That's just awesome, and yeah, that's my that's my rep. So <laughs> what? So, so what was the answer? I don't like, know. It's, <laughs> he's having a good. He's having There's, a good time at it. Good, yeah. good feelings all around. I mean, let me let me say this: like Jeff and I joined that Discord channel like this week, and I was okay. honestly like overwhelmed at the amount of activity and the number of conversations that are going on there. It felt like on par with router gods if y'all are familiar with that like router yeah, gods yeah. is ridiculous like how many people are active in there and then i jump in y'alls and i was expecting like you know 100 or 200 people and maybe 10 percent or no it's like it's Everybody. a big deal people are talking yeah. in y'all's discord channel about a wide range of topics and i was like whoa i gotta actually throw a lot more attention at this because like maybe there's a way i can learn or help or blah 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 so y'all's discord a plus, great job. Uh, Aaron, you're up. Tell me about. Oh no, I thought you guys why... were gonna go to AJ first because no, we're, we're going back. We're in the reverse. Yeah, well, next. so, uh, you look, I'm not gonna make AJ look bad by any means by just saying really AJ asked me to. So this is how I ended up here. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, that really, that's what happened. He's like, hey, dude. Um, but the, no, the Discord channel it was another part of it too. We used to have a Slack channel right right before yeah. that. So that was yeah, we started with Slack. Yeah. It was very similar, right? Um, AJ discovered Discord. Well, he discovered that other folks were using Discord, which was Mm -hmm. huge for us because it added that voice capability section, which, you know, we haven't, you know, we don't use that a lot. Like, we don't just climb in a room and and chit chat like a round table as much as I I would like to. Now, I did it last week after your episode actually uh, aired on our our, our stuff. And it was cool because I got to have a conversation with guys all over the country. And all we were doing was, I was like, hey, share your screen, get up on LinkedIn, and show me what your LinkedIn page looks like. That's all I wanted to see. And, you know, it's a much different thing than what you do on a daily basis, which is help people with technology 
and even processes and things like that. Like, you know, we have all types of stuff at CBT Nuggets you can go learn. But what we have is, yes, the person ability, you could just ask straight up a question. But more importantly, it's those other pieces of the puzzle that you're missing, which is, you know, the resume, like how, how do you, you know, we heard the episode that we did about how, how do you brand yourself, right? How do you, how do you put yourself out there? And, and for some folks and what we've noticed, like I'm going to throw a crazy stat out there. Last uh, Tuesday, we had the the Knox episode we recorded uh, for our, our show. Right after that, I kind of went on a tear. I was a little fired up and uh, we got some guys, we got some guys, <laughs> I was amped. We got some guys in the voice channel and we started looking at LinkedIn pages. Dude, five different blogs started in the last week yeah. because of all the, because yeah. we, because of the episodes, right? And like having guys like you on and, and then some of our other awesome guests like Dira, she's like a pro yeah. at this, you know, like, like and pe people hear that and they go, man, I could, I, I bet I could do that. And they're just looking for a little push and that's all they took. And I mean, guys, just simple little things. And it's just been, it, it's, this is why I'm here is basically what I'm getting at. Like the, the feeling that you get when you're just like, you know, you're just doing or showing someone else what you did, right, to help yourself. And instead of it being selfish anymore, you're just passing it on and, and it becomes such a different feeling. Like, you know, I could pass a CCNA and get a $10,000 raise. That mm -hmm. wouldn't feel anything like me helping some of these guys or gals pass their CCNA and them going in the channel and being like, I did it. Mm -hmm. I did it. Cause we all celebrate that. We all get to own it. Like, it's like, it's like we all did it together. It's like, it's such yeah. a crazy experience. Cause it is just that it's a community. So like AJ, what's the quote? I always ask you every time. <laughs> High tides make all boats float. All, yeah. The, the, the rising tide yeah. makes all the boats float because that's what it is in there. Right. And, and even when somebody takes a loss, like, like, ah, oh, I got fired or something like that. Like we're all there. Like, Hey, what can we do? We, we got a recruiter. You know, we got guys like you and Jeff in there. You know, I mean, the, the, our network at this point, you know, yes, we're good at networking, but this type of networking, which is just a little bit different, um, but it's it's just as crucial as actual networking. So, yeah, yeah. this is this is why I come here. Yep. I, I mean, and I love that quote, too. I think we said it off the record at one point where I was like, a rising tide lifts all ships. Yep. And mm -hmm. And then that turned into the conversation of, you need to learn teeamwork right now. You know, not to yep. uh, steal somebody else's brand. No, but, we would never tell was, you what to learn. <laughs> but, but th that was, you know, the the idea was that we were talking about that, like when we all work together, it's like we all lift each other up. Even if you know, we we got off on another tangent off the record when we were talking about like how we personally may not be progressing right now or progressing at the way that we want to be progressing, but there's still a way that we can lift other people up, and that really makes the world better too. That's it. Yep. yep. All right, AJ, bring us home. Tell us what this podcast means to you personally. The mastermind. And why you are doing it. The oh, mastermind. Here he is. Wow. Here he so, is. Drum roll. Just, just, just pause one second though. Like, I don't know if AJ is going to say it, but AJ is the mastermind behind. One hundred percent. I'm not joking. Just, like, just this throwing is that out no, there. No pressure, guys. Sometimes, no pressure. So, sometimes he he wants to be like, oh, it's all of us, and it, please, it's like, no, it's please, just, just feel like I was, it. just so, feel like I was just me. so bored and. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, COVID. well, you know, that, that, that certainly plays a part into it, but, um, you know, like you guys were saying, when, when I first started blogging, I was trying to like find my voice, what do I want to blog about? And as I'm, you know, looking through social media, I see pass, 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 pass. And here I am taking all my exams and it's fail, 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 fail. Uh, and, and so I just wanted to call attention to that. Like this stuff is hard and, and people work their butts off. They make sacrifices, uh, and, and, you know, when you listen to other podcasts, there's a lot of, you know, I, I would say people that are like the unicorns of networking, like they worked really hard to get where they were, but that doesn't always come through when they tell their story. Uh, and, and so I don't want to just interview like, like, I don't want, I, I love that you're a huge fan. I'm so grateful that you decided to come on the podcast, but I want to interview the everyday network engineer and share their story too, because that's super relate, relatable to, to all of us out there, right? Uh, and, and even though it's called the art of network engineering, I want it to appeal to anybody in IT and, and help them understand like, it is tough, but if we all rally together, we all work together, uh, you know, and, and realize like, yeah, it can be done, we can do it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I really like that too. And uh, let me chime in and say something that like is very serious to me. Like I've listened to every single one of y'all's episodes and there was some aspect, including the most previous one with Dira, like there was some aspect of 
every single person that I've listened to where I was like, I was that person or I had that mentality or, oh, I feel that way all the time. There was something so incredibly relatable about it too. And, you know, taking that a step further, like the average network engineer is not what's glorified in social media. The only thing that we have in common the only thing that is relatable about a CCIE who drives a Tesla is that none of us are that person. Mm-hmm. You know right. what I mean? Right. Like, right. like, so right. let's, let's, let's just be honest about that for a second. And it's not that we don't want to be that person one day or that we're trying to become that person or, or whatever our journey is. We don't have to be that person is the topic that no one is talking about that. I think you guys are like, there is, there is a level of where you guys are balancing aspiration and goals and growth with also being happy in your own skin and being yourself and not trying to kill yourself to keep up with the Joneses. So that kind of leads into my next question is what is the point of the podcast? Anyone can take that. That's AJ. That's AJ. (laughs) I I mean, it's just that to to share stories, right? Like to, and and that's not the only thing we're going to do, right? Like we, we do want to talk about technology. We want to educate people. Uh, You know, I I say in the, in the kind of the opening credits there, you know, we want to expand your, your skill, uh, your toolbox, build your skills uh, and share some stories of other people. So that's, that's kind of everything that we plan to do. You know, we're only what, 14 episodes in, uh, episode 14 drops tomorrow morning. Uh, and, and so we, we got some well, plans, man. And hold on yeah. a second. Hold on one second. <laughs> You're leaving out a very important part about that episode. Oh, I know. I know. It is okay. Mr. Dox's episode. Yeah. <laughs> one of two. We, one of so two. So everybody, yep. everybody out there in YouTube land, we had to split poor Noxie Poo here into two episodes because, uh, <laughs> Oh, well, we just couldn't get him to shut up. So yeah, you'll, 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 yeah. you'll hear it. And I mean, yeah. you know him, then I mean, yeah, and, par for the course here. So, And I still had two or three hours left in me to talk. We still <laughs> didn't talk about network automation or Azure developer. <laughs> no, that, we steered clear <laughs> of Azure developer because we knew it was a hot button for you. But, but 100%, I literally sat down to record DevCore today and I was like, how am I going to squeeze Azure Developer into DevCore? And I found a way. I found oh, I'm, I'm actually God. taking diagrams out of the Azure course. I'm like, see, this is how you do it in the cloud. <laughs> Real world example using Microsoft Azure. Yeah. So, anyways, just throwing that out there. Anyways, um, so that's I, I. I mean, I really appreciate. I really appreciate that, and and I also let me let me let me ask you guys this: Has there been any part of this? That has actually been instru- is like a, do, do y'all do any instruction about networking? Do y'all teach about networking or systems or anything? Uh, AJ I see does. Dan shaking his head. No, nope, I don't. <laughs> well, not on not on the podcast yet. Yeah, not right? on the podcast. exactly. I mean, AJ, yeah. AJ and uh, Aaron, you know, have some great blog posts on you know all different kinds of yep. technologies and and a lot of people on our Discord uh, server too. So there's a lot of people blogging about technologies and teaching. But right. I mean, now the podcast, we're not but, really doing, I mean, I mean, to me, that's what you guys and CBT nuggets are about and all the professional trainers. But I, I think we I think we want to dabble, right. And maybe teaching right. some technicals, I guess we're feeling it out as we go. Right. It's, it's kind of a, but there kind of are a new podcasts thing. where like, they're like doing an EIGRP deep dive and yeah. like EIGRP designs and why you would use it in hub spoke over DMVP and blah, blah, blah. But yep. y'all don't do that nope. because you're more focused on the person. Yeah. And, and, well, and that's, right? And the yeah, story. I mean, at the end of the day, like we all have very like similar jobs in that we all deal with the same sort of thing. So like in no way, shape or form is my day like anybody else's day here. But that's what's so cool about it because everybody that we interview is the same story. So it's like, hey, yeah, your day in, day out is completely different. Uh, additionally, how you got here is clearly different. For me personally, the part that I try to draw out of every one of our guests is the same thing that we did on the first episode. And that's like, Hey, like show us that you're human because we know that you're failing. Like we admitted it. We fail. Um, I Mm -hmm. even just talked about how I failed, uh, DevNet like this year because I had like a free or a a cheap exam. Right. So I was like, screw it. I'll do it. And I failed awful. It was an awful experience. (laughs) But like us just talking about that is like, is enough because I don't have a DevNet associate. I have, I have nothing. I, so I have nothing to like brag about. I don't make anything look easy. Like that stuff's hard for me. (laughs) Like it it doesn't click at all, like whatsoever, but like people hearing stuff like that, like I I would actually be 
surprised if people didn't want to watch us like try to struggle our way through something as opposed to just showing you how something works and the the finished product right like like they want to see like andy you just did this right like you recorded something and you said you were messing around for like an hour like trying to do something because you were going to record it and you were like really it ended up being like 60 minutes of me trying to figure something out and you know what sometimes that can be the best te- like dude we're all together having these like light bulbs pop off like whoa dude did you see that like we just did it like this is awesome like that's such a cool feeling right so for for me it was like hey look we're human can we all just stop acting like we're not right everybody's story is completely different there's no there's no right or wrong answer on how to do anything um, and that even goes for technology right like uh, who's to say that i want to use a uh, rabbit spanning tree over mst no one if I want to choose either, it doesn't matter. It's, it's completely up to me, right? Um, there's no wrong answer here. Are, do, do some work better in certain situations? Sure. But are both going to get the job done? Absolutely. So if you're going to pick apart your life like you would uh, uh, RSTP versus MST uh, conversation, then yeah, maybe I should have done this in seventh grade and I should have paid attention you know, in economics class because I don't know how to do my taxes. Like stuff like that. Like, But... Th- that's not always the case, right? Like I have stuff that I'm really good at. AJ has stuff he's really good at. And he's got stuff he's got, he's really good at. Dan so- probably has something he's good at. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Actually, we just found out Dan is a professional videographer, by the way. So if we want to touch on that later, it's, it's been blowing Wait, our minds. The like- professional videographer that just got a camera? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He just had a, web- yeah, exactly. We'll go into that. God, but, but really, really the point is, is just like that. Like Dan, like the guy, he didn't have a webcam. Like, I mean, so many of us started working from home, didn't even have a webcam. Like, you know what I mean? And, yeah, and I it's just, yeah. yeah and, th- and this world is just like so different now too. So it's like, it was such a good time for us to be like, Hey, look, we're all human because we were all collectively separated. <laughs> we we're all sitting in our own places together. Right? Like, so let's find something like this, almost like a common thread that we could just all attach to and not feel like we aren't studying enough. You know, it's this this is very reminiscent somehow of like media in general or like TV shows or sitcoms or, uh, you know, drama TV shows that we watch. The main characters are almost always what people consider the upper crust or the elite. They're doctors, they're lawyers. Right. Uh, so we're talking like the Grey's Anatomy or the suits mm. or things like that. And that's what society drills into us is that, you know, the... These are the people that we should glorify. And if it's not them, then we're watching professional sports. In the networking world, social media, it seems, is the way that we build our communities in the networking world. And the people, there are people that are being glorified, not necessarily wrongly. Let me stress that. Uh, yeah. But but it does feel kind of like there's us and then there's them. And oh, there's yeah. not a we. There's not We're not all together here. And that's where I think, I I mean, at least, you know, listening to y'all and it it just feels like your podcast is really designed for everyone, regardless of where they are on their journey. But especially if you're just getting started or if you're midway there, not if you're at the end. Um, Not to say that there's not a place for the people at the end, but... That's what what I have taken away. There there is a place for them. Um, We've interviewed people that have like we just did like okay yourself obviously very accomplished but you also teach uh, somebody else we just did has two ccies Mm -hmm. the the difference is this when we talk to someone with two ccies or we talk to somebody that hasn't even gotten their ccna it's the exact same conversation yeah because yes that person was once there right we know that (laughs) but Mm -hmm. we we none of us here are ccies um and that's been working to our advantage. And I'm using CCIE specifically because that's like, you know, like you talked about upper crust and upper echelon. That would be the doctor of our industry, right? Um, and so for us, none of us have that. Therefore, we really don't even know what it's like. And we also don't know how they think. So if you're going to let us interview someone with the CCIE, they're going to get the same questions that we ask a, a CCNA person, right? Like, I, I want to know what you did. And if you if you listen to any episodes, you'll find that right about the... 40 minute mark andy inevitably will say something like okay look i got I kids <laughs> I knew okay this was going. i'm working from home where do you find time for all this stuff right yeah. so he asks he asks dira 
He asks a dual CCIE. He asks uh, Taylor, who works for AJ, who we interviewed, who's 24. You know, like, what a humbling experience for a guy in his, I'm going to say mid-40s, I won't do you like that, a guy in his mid-40s who is asking a 24-year-old, how the hell do you do that? Like, yeah, I, I personally wouldn't even do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, I don't have that kind of humility. Like, I would never be able to ask Taylor how the hell he did it. I mean, like, I probably did on the show, but it was like, like, teach us. Like, everybody wants to know, not like I wanted to know. But Andy genuinely wants to know the secret sauce because he finds himself struggling between work-life balance and then the third piece of the puzzle, which is now certifying and trying to keep up with the Joneses, which is like everybody on Twitter that isn't us, <laughs> which is probably the most important aspect of that. It's not us. That ain't mm -hmm. us, bro. <laughs> but there's a little bit of keeping up with the Joneses. Absolutely. I mean, in the back of our minds somewhere. I mean, maybe it's not a primary goal. Maybe it's not like, oh, they just bought an X7, so I got to I gotta up my game and get an X7M. Or like, no, but like that's, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. But like there is a level of like, you see other people's success and you're like, I like now's the time I should be grabbing success too, but I can't. Uh, and I think I, I feel like Andy, like where can you, do you want to talk about that a little more? Or should, is this a past situation? No, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm willing to talk about anything. I've, I've obviously embarrassed myself on a lot of these episodes. <laughs> no, that's not what I mentioned. No, no, all. No, and everybody know, knows know. that. Everybody yeah, yeah. knows that. You're yeah, not you know what, Mark? That. I mean, so I mean, there's so many things you hit on that I wanted to talk about, but I guess specifically to your question, you know, we we'll talk about whatever you want. Well, it's you not even about keeping up with the Joneses. I mean, for me, and again, this is one of those things I'm going to say out loud and hope I don't regret later, but you know, I almost feel like my skill set is outdated. Hmm. I'm just a route switch guy and that's not enough anymore. Hmm. Eight years ago when I got my CCNA, that's what you needed. Now, hmm. You know, at work, I'm surrounded by people. They don't say it, but they all have those additional skill sets, specializations that they've all built on top of Route Switch. So, you know, it, it's a big part of it is because of what's happened at my job, and there's been a, a big reorg and shift. And now I'm surrounded by people who are like, yeah, sure, Route Switch, it's a given. What's your thing? You know, so mm -hmm. that's really what I'm fighting against is, you know, I got to learn cloud. I got to learn automation. I got to mm -hmm. learn Junos. I, I got like, there's honestly, there's eight different things I have to learn for work right now. Mm -hmm. And I haven't passed the Cisco exam in years. <laughs> like my CCNA is about to expire in December. And, yep. but, but again, because of this community, one of our guys, uh, Carl Zeller, you know, we, mm -hmm. we, we interviewed him and, and he stayed on afterwards and talked to me for like an hour, an hour and a half. And he gave me a really good tip on like, you know what? Don't, you know, put Encore down. There's this other, I asked him about design and he, but again, if you're not having these conversations with these people and you're not in that community and I'd be pounding my head into this Encore wall for the next year and a half, asking a hundred podcast guests, how are you doing it? <laughs> when what really, I think what I need is a win. I, yeah. I, I need a low hanging fruit win. JNCIA is probably going to be one of them for me because I had it. I just have to renew it. Juno's genius has free stuff, sweet so, uh, you know, but I, I don't know that that's kind of my whole, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and, and why I ask each person, because I just I got to get a win. And everybody we talk about is winning all the time. And sure, they fail a lot. But, you know, you got a 24, 24 year old who got four professional certs in seven months. And I'm like, <laughs> well, wow, yeah, of like, course, he is 24. <laughs> but, but, you know, but that blows me away. And I'm humble enough. <clears throat> to be able to say like, dude, you're the man. And I wish I was yeah. doing what you were doing at 24. And, yeah. and for me, you, you had asked earlier, what's the point of this podcast? For me, it's, it's those stories because here's what blows me away. Every single person we talk to, we all have the same job basically, but everybody's got there in a different way, in a different, they all have their story and they all have their struggles and they've all gotten there a different way, which blows me away because I thought you had to be a computer science major to get this kind of job. And if we've interviewed 12 people, they've all got the job 12 different ways and maybe one or two of them had computer science degrees. So, you know, there, there's a lot of truths being kind of, uh, you know, uncovered just in all these conversations, you know, for me and I think some other people who might also be under those, you know, misconceptions of, you know, what do you got to do 
you know, to get here, people from the help desk, the cable guy to, you know, whatever there, there's just, and, and what, what is like four or five things we've kind of uncovered guys, like, you know, whatever it is the passion, curious, asking yep. questions, going after it, being your own advocate. Like there seems to be four or five things that if you have, you'll succeed. And, and none of them are being smart, right? Like none of the qualities that you need are to be smart. Does it help? Absolutely. But the things that he just described, that's what we've uncovered every single time. Because Andy, like, you know, it he's genuine because he's asking because he wants to implement something that works. So he's looking for even just like a rough template of what he could do, just some guardrails, right? So he doesn't spin off the tracks. Um, but he's he's not getting a direct answer, you know, from anybody really. And but there, studying, I don't think Aaron. I've been studying yeah, I mean. wrong my that's whole what I mean. career. That's what I mean. I've been that's highlighting I mean. in books. I mean, I was just yeah. listening to, you know, highlighting is useless. I never go back and read the highlights. Yep. So, so you know, it's it's interesting, but I'm in my mid 40s asking 20 year olds how they did it and taking courses on Coursera, like learn how to learn because I'm, I'm trying to shift. You know, you got to be able to change. You got to be able to see your weak points and address them and try something different. And I tell you, the older you get, a lot of people don't do that. Well, this is how I do it. And I, you know, I'm going to grab my bootstraps and but I there's there's something about that though that like you know there's a mentality and I always feel like it's it gets filed away in the same folder as uh the vacation shaming <laughs> it it's like no one wants to tell you how they did it and they they always do one or two polar opposites they either go yeah first of all good luck you're not going to be able to do that I studied for 15 hours a day and it's pretty untouchable cuz I'm so smart and you're not that's basically what they're saying or they're like, that's ah, so easy, dude, you could do it. And you're like, okay, yeah, right, buddy. <laughs> but there's never like, you know what? It's funny you say that, Andy. I'm glad you asked. Here's what I did. It was a real struggle at first. So great example, Jeff Kish gave us, he showed us those coupons he had for his wife. Yeah. yeah. That, like how great wait, was that? Really so I'll explain I'll explain to the audience what, what exactly went on. We, we had this conversation in the Discord server. Knox just told us that him and Jeff Kish had joined it recently. So he piped up during a conversation about, how did you study for your CCIE? And he had these coupons for his wife that basically said it was like a get out of jail free card. She could just invoke this card at any point and be like, you're not studying today. And that's how she felt like she was in control. And it was cool to hear that he said that she never even really used them. Just the fact that she had them was cool. But it's stuff like that that you just wouldn't think of. And we would be spending 15 hours a day highlighting, rereading the same stuff, and just never really having anything of substance to get out of it because no one above us, uh, quote unquote, above us helped us out, right? So Jeff even telling us that he had a coupon system with his wife, that's what we need. You know what I mean? How did you do it? I've heard guys talking about studying for the CCIE, and I know we beat up this all the time because it's like the upper echelon, the apex of of certifications for us, right? But like when you talk to those people, guy, girl, indifferent, it doesn't matter. They all have very similar stories, and they're like, yeah, I studied a lot. I mean, like we knew that, though. We knew mm -hmm. you studied. We didn't assume you just walked in there and passed it. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> so tell us what you did. Like, give us a day in the life of somebody who studies for a CCIE. That's all we're asking for. Not even a CCIE. CCNP. CCNA, right? Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I have a CCNA. Maybe I was doing it wrong. I don't know. Like, well, if I can be more topic efficient. about our podcast that I won't spoil too much, but it was largely about how I think people who are studying for the CCIE are doing it wrong. Because the stories that you hear are, I woke up at 3 a.m., I studied till 8 a.m., I studied from 12 to 1, and then I studied from 7 to 1 a.m., so I got three hours of sleep a day, and I did that for nine straight months. Don't do that. I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm good. Don't. No, don't, I'm don't good. Yeah. And I have don't. heard that a lot. Right? And, and, I've always and, heard and that's, that's what's required. That's, and that's and what, to be honest, for from my point of view, that's kind of a shut off of even wanting to try that. I mean. I, I haven't know. done that. I didn't do that. And no, I think, you like, have I would. I, I would at least be competitive on the exam if I took it right now. I studied it just the same way that I studied all of my other exams. I just spent more months on it than the rest of them. So, I mean. That's the thing is like, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like this podcast is bringing to light some of these truths or these things that, you know, are kind of hidden beneath that upper echelon tweet that's happening. And, yeah. and I, I really like those honest conversations. Um, well, AJ, AJ will tell you straight up, right? Like his, his goal for all this. Cause like, he's going to be coy somewhat about it. All this was his idea. He was the one that was like, guys, we got a podcast. He was like, guys, we got a Discord channel, right? And we're just like, yeah, where do we sign up, dude? We got your back. Because the vision was like, let's help people. 
the unintended, uh, I don't know what we call it consequence, but the unintended, unintended result was that here we are learning more than we're giving to everybody else. Like I'm selfishly taking away more from this than we're giving to people. I kind of feel bad about it sometimes. That was actually going to be my next question. Okay, I do. So I, I had two next questions, I, and they're kind of related, but kind of not. I wanted to know how old were you when you learned subnetting? So let's go around the horn. Let's do AJ. How old were you when you learned IPv4 subnetting? Uh, I was in college. I think it was like early 20s, like 21, 22, maybe. Okay. Aaron? Um. I was 28. I the it, mine's unique because I had to learn it so that I could teach it to other people. Yeah. Mm. Dan, I think I was about 21 if I remember correctly. And then about okay. 22 I forgot it and I just used a subnet calculator, so. That's it's, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Andy. So, hold on. Dan doesn't Dan doesn't have a CCNA yet, just so we're all clear. Yes, <laughs> yes. CCNA. Okay. Okay. You don't have to have it. No, Andy, no. Andy, how old were you? In true form, much older than the rest of the panel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was trying you to look up. You don't have to say it. You just nah, say it. I mean, it's, it's all good. Um, I was trying to look up my blog to see when the hell I got my CCNA, and I, I don't remember. I would say in my mid-30s, probably. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I was, let me think. I had just turned 30 mm. when, I, when I learned IPv4 something, and I turned 35 in a few hours so oh uh, dude wait wow. a minute we, we almost had matching birthdays and you didn't say a thing <laughs> how dare you <laughs> that's should, right, should, your birthday was recently. should we sing should i get my guitar uh, nah, not, yet. It's not, it's not, yeah i can't open my presents yet so. i'm setting my alarm for 11 59 and i am gonna tweet happy it's birthday to not october 22nd is the day Oh, okay. Is, well, all right. All right. So it's, it's, you know, just a little over 24 hours, but still. Okay. Um, so, okay. I mean, it's, you know, th there's a wide range of people here and we all, I feel like we're all on the same playing field. We're all playing the same game right now. And the cool thing about it is that I feel like your audience is representing this same diverse journey. We all started at different times. Yeah. I mean, do y'all, is that true? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you, you dip into our Discord channel, you're going to see all walks of life from all parts of the world, like literally world. Um, guys are up at three in the morning talking to each other because they live in India, right? And it's like daytime for them and they're eating lunch or something, you know? So yeah, that that this is a small sample size, but it's almost like the it's a small world version, right? Because maybe just a small sample of what you'll get. If you walk in there, you're going to see all types of different people and different experiences. And I love, I love that personally. Like there's some stuff going on right now. Sorry, dude, I'm doing it to you right now. You saw me. I'm wandering. My eyes are wandering. There's a guy in our channel, just started a blog. Super cool dude. I've actually talked to him on the phone. I talked to him on the phone last summer. So not this summer, the last summer he called me because he wanted to know how something worked. I was like, Hey, do you have a minute to talk? What I didn't know is when I answered the phone that he was from Nigeria because his English is so good, like when he types, and not that your English is bad if you're from another country, but you know, you there's you certain things. You, it's like yeah, it's like a like a typing accent, right? And so I was like, I was like, holy crap, dude, where are you from? He's like Nigeria, and and the reason why it was so predominant that he was from Nigeria was because of the latency on our phone call. <laughs> it had nothing to do with what he sounded like or what he, you know, like it, it was a background noise, nothing. I couldn't figure it out. I was like, you must be literally on the other side of the planet because it's taking so long for my phone call to get there. So we had an awesome conversation and I just learned two days ago, guys, this, I'm talking about uh, Charles, Network Charles. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and cause him and I talked like last year. I don't know if you guys remember that. But um, so I helped him out. I didn't realize stuff. he was in Nigeria either. Yeah, he's in Nigeria, and he's been posting a lot of stuff lately about SARS, which is not SARS like the cold, right? But but about some like government oppression type stuff that's going on in Nigeria that I would mm. have no idea about if I if I wasn't connected to this guy like on the Discord channel, right? Mm -hmm. So him and everybody knows like Cisco Panther. He's also from uh, Nigeria, and so they both share kind of like a commonality. Um, and he was talking about him and how he came over here and all this other stuff. Like it was, I mean, it's just cool, right? Cause you, yeah. not that it's a good thing that's happening over there necessarily, but it was cool to be exposed to that. Cause I don't watch the news. I, I do like you guys do. I, 
I read about multicast like for fun. That's just <laughs> my thing, you know. So yeah, that's just like a byproduct of all of that that I think is turning into something bigger than we ever had expected. So do y'all have like a mission statement? Is there like is there a an end goal for you? Is there a moment where you're like, oh, we finally did it? I, I wish I could say we were that organized about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who are we interviewing next week? <laughs> I think we just want to help people, right? Like if you had to yeah. condense yeah. it down and, and and however that looks, and maybe it'll change over time. Like right now it's telling people stories. And, and I'll be honest with you, if 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 at the very least somebody out there hears that a 35 year old cable guy who came from nothing and had nothing has, you know, become a network engineer at a gigantic company and doing pretty darn well. And, you know, that career has given him a life that's beyond his dreams. Then to me, it's a success, but I, I guess it's, it's continuing to evolve, you know, but I'd love hearing people's stories and their struggles and how they got there. I, I want to dwell on what you just said for a second, giving you a life that's beyond your dreams. And you didn't need a CCIE and a Tesla to have a life that's beyond your dreams. Like, think about that, people. That's that's the message. That's the message is, you know, achieve. Make sure that you make your life happen. But once you're there, like, take a moment to, to enjoy it and, and appreciate that life that's beyond your dreams. I mean, I think I'm there now. So, hmm. uh, I mean, have you all seen the show called The Good Place at all? Yeah. Mm -mm. It's yeah. it's created by the same guy who created Parks and Rec and The Office, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Schur. And uh, you know, if you don't want to hear a spoiler, then take your headphones off. <laughs> but <laughs> but that like it's all about trying to get into heaven. And again, mm -hmm. listeners, if you don't want to hear the spoiler, uh, just fast forward like three minutes and and you'll come back. Um, but eventually, literally on the last two episodes. Uh, they make it into heaven, and the entire episode was so incredibly brilliantly and emotionally structured. And this is a comedy show, but the last two episodes were very emotional. Hmm. And it made me pause and contemplate, if I died, what would my heaven be? And it makes hmm. you think about, like, what what is your heaven? Yeah. And then I realized, like, after sitting there and thinking about it for a day or two, I was like, wait a minute. My heaven isn't that different from what I have right now. That's great. Like my heaven would be sitting next to my wife and kids, maybe looking yeah. at a mountain instead of a swamp. But <laughs> like called a bayou, Knox. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> a bayou is just a small lake, like it's or a small river. It's uh, it's it's like I don't know what what you just said, Andy. Like really hit me, and it really made it took me back into that exact moment where it made me realize like. I don't need to go and achieve a whole lot more right now. Maybe I do someday, but I can be happy with right now. It's okay. Especially with all the stuff that's happening in the world Dude. right now. Yeah. Just, I got my health. Like, it's, human it's human nature. We're never satisfied. We're all looking for the next dopamine hit. It's a survival instinct, but it can really make you miserable. Yeah, if, if you, if you really can't stop and look there. around and, you know, enjoy where you're at, especially if it's good. Like you said, I have a wonderful wife and these great kids and a house bigger than I ever thought I'd have in a great place. Like, and I have friends like you guys and, you know, I'm on lockdown in COVID, but like I get to talk Andy. to you guys and I made all these friends. Like my life is just better than it's ever been, but I can go on here and whine about, Oh, I don't have my MP <laughs> and I don't know automation and I don't know cloud <laughs> yet. I'm going to get fired and be homeless. Like it's Help. nonsense. Couple of things you do that very well. First of what? all, what, what do I do? Get on here and complain about how you don't have your NP. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, there's, 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 there's a there's a there's a second part of of what you said that was something that I wanted to hit home because I I know for a fact that it's happened. So, you know, Knox talked about your heaven. Let's call it like heaven on earth, and you're like, I basically have that, right? Like, I mean, I did well for myself, but if if I can inspire one person because I was a cable guy and I came from nothing like that, that that's happened to you. Yeah. Tell us, speak it. Somebody came up to you, right? Like, uh, was it another cable guy? I've had it, probably at least a half a dozen people approach me since the podcast started. And since I, I put out a couple um, YouTube videos, one of them was how I went from cable guy to network engineer. And mm -hmm. I had at least a half a dozen people find me either on YouTube that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn about, 
you know, hey, I'm a cable guy and I was thinking about my, you know, doing my CCNA. So I just bought a book or, hey, you know, I'm, I'm a cable guy studying for my CCNA and you really helped me and gave me hope. And just, I mean, I, I never would have imagined, you know, because again, I, I feel like an imposter most of the time. I feel like everybody's more qualified than me. You know, I don't know where the hell that comes from, but um, to, to have people tell me, to, to know that I help people and, and gave them some motivation and hope and like, I mean, man, that's just, and, and if I never, you know, you got to put yourself out there and that comes with being vulnerable and maybe falling on your face and being made fun of or whatever. But it's it's been so nice to get positive feedback from people who were like, yeah, man, that thank you. You know, people thanking me for like making a video, like really? And you maybe, know, because maybe that's your thing, dude. Maybe because like you're always so worried about like what you're going to do, like how you're going to study, how you're going to get your NP and stuff. But maybe like that's not even the focus because you just described what your heaven was, right? It, you have it already and then uh, helping other people and you're getting both of those, right? So maybe what you're supposed to be doing is what you're exactly doing, which is getting on here, speaking your truth, right? Telling people who you are as a person and that's helping and, and they're using you to help themselves when you think to yourself that you can't help yourself. Does that make sense? So like it does. Like while you can't seem to find your own motivation, you're very good at giving it to other people. And if it's only because you're just saying what happened, like you know, you're not Tony Robbins, right? Like you're not like me. <laughs> you don't sit up here and yell for no reason about something, you know, like cuz 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 I'll be honest, it happens to AJ too. People say thanks for, you know, hooking me oh, up yeah. and like yeah. you guys are great. Sure. No one ever says a single thing to me. And I'm not saying and I'm not saying because like uh, I'm looking for it or, you know, obviously I would notice it if somebody said something to it, but it's because there's a different dynamic here, right? Like I get that. I, I don't look for people to say that to me. Like, I don't need that. Like, I know that, I know that we are collectively and I'm a part of that. Like, I don't need that direct response, you know, like you're, you're the dopamine hit. But to, when I hear that you guys get it, it's almost better for me. Like if somebody, if you tell me a story about somebody that you affected, like from us being on the podcast, yeah, I, like I, I get more excited for that than you probably do because i'm like hey i was a part of that that was really cool right like even your cable guy video i was a cable guy too i was super stoked for that video i was like yes this is dead on right i mean like it was aimed right at me i was like same same bro well here's a crazy dirty secret right creating content for this community is yeah my my favorite thing i'm doing in my life and i love it be it the podcast or, or youtube videos and there's a nagging voice in my head that says i should be studying for certification instead mm -hmm. I'm just being honest and vulnerable and like, so, you know, I, I'm spending four to six hours a week on this podcast that I could be studying. Or if I'm spending three hours recording and producing, everything's keeping me from studying. And I'll, embarrassingly enough, it could be my kids coming in and I'm like, guys, I'm trying, like, so I can almost get in that headspace where like, I have to study and everything in my life is keeping me from studying. Even though Aaron creating content is, the best thing going on in my life right now, but there's still a negative in my head about it. And you know, that's my own When, BS, when you're but. in the zone, like when it's study time and you've got a goal and that certification is just, just within your reach. I mean, I'm right there with you. So the way we, we do it is like I work in the morning and my wife works in the afternoon and then we just figure out any other time that we can work. And that's just how we've split it because you know, we're at home with our son uh, who's, you know, an at risk, you know, for COVID. So when I'm like watching him in the afternoon, maybe he's running up and down the sidewalk and he wants to play with everybody's Halloween inflatables and everything. And I'm sitting there <laughs> thinking like, you know, maybe I could get just a little bit of multicast in. So do I fire up the phone and I'm like, just like reading <laughs> Kindle out of the corner of my eye while watching him with it's my awful, other eyes. It's awful, isn't it? Like it's, it's bad. Yeah. It's bad. And Your kid is there, the most important human on the planet to you. And you could yep. either be present and watch him be a kid and free. Yep. Or do what you just described, which is what I do too. It's like, oh man, maybe I can just, you know, what was that BGP oh, and thing? It, and it's. It totally bit me the other day. Like he ran up in someone's yard and their yard has like all these cameras and all these signs that say like, you are on camera, no trespassing. And the dude like came outside and like ran up to me and he's like, what are you doing in my yard? Did you, did you get everything that you need? Like he like literally got up in my face while I'm holding my two-year-old. And I'm like, 
No, I grip. mean, my kid just got away from me and I was like, you know, on my phone or something. I'm sorry about that. Do you want to hear something crazy how pervasive this technology crap is? I had to download an app called Freedom. <laughs> this technology crap. Well, it's I, a can't, phone. I can't stay off. <laughs> it's, a phone. it's actually a, a supercomputer in your hands that has Thanks. all the all the wealth of human knowledge ever. But yeah. I had to download an app called Freedom, which will shut down your phone for you. It's a VPN that will shut everything down. I mean... I got to have an app to shut everything down so that I don't do what you just described and ignore my kid when I'm supposed to be watching him because it, mm -hmm. so I, I don't know. It's just the world we're in, but yeah. Tangent. Sorry. I watch my kid. Please don't call the police. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like somebody. I just did. follow. I actually just followed him up into this person's yard. <laughs> well, I might've had an aha moment because of you guys tonight, you know, maybe creating content is really what gives me happiness and I'll stop beating myself up that, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting a cert. So we'll, well go with I, that for a while. Please, please though. Don't stop asking people how they're doing. Cause I live for that stuff. <laughs> Like I know the second that they're like I'm not saying something. I know you guys know it too. He slides it right. He because you could see him thinking over there, and I watch him too because like I, you guys could see this at home now, right? But if you look on Andy's desk right there, he's usually got a pad of paper right next to that keyboard, mm -hmm. and he's writing frantically. <laughs> and I and it's not because okay, you guys, remember, you guys remember those shows back in the day? It was like it was like Game Informer, like the TV show or something. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And they were like they were like okay. Be ready at the end of the show because we're going to give you Liu Kang's fatality. So you better be ready to to write down the code, like you know, up, up, down, left, left, A, A, <laughs> select, or whatever. And so this is this is Andy, like when people are giving out tests, he's like, oh, he's like right. <laughs> and then, well, one thing I noticed is like he never comes back to it, but he always has because he always has the same question. Like he was writing all that down, like he was intending to do something, and then. I could tell. I just I, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. He gets to the end of the thing, and, and, and like it's like 40, 45 minutes into it, and he just kind of. I got a question. <laughs> it always starts with, well, so well. <laughs> so I got a I've question. Got, in, you got kids. In my <laughs> defense, in my defense, it takes Aaron about forty-five minutes to tire himself out so that I can get a question in. <laughs> that, that is true. That There's is a science true. to getting a question in when Aaron hosts. Yes, but they, I mean, they, I I want to know these the answers to these questions too now because like we talked about this a lot on the podcast, but like the shift when COVID hit and the shift from working 40, 60, 80 hour weeks to 12, 16, 20 hour weeks. Like that has had that has actually caused mental disorders in a lot of different people who are mm. now having to seek therapy, which is good. Go seek therapy if you're if you are struggling with this change. You are not alone. Even if you're I'm not right struggling with you, like like. But but if you've got it figured out and you've figured out how to do time management, I would like to hear the answers to these questions too because I'm open to ideas at this point. Like yeah. that's that is. Well, that's we, we, you know, we would like to have like a repository that people could refer to like, Hey, here's all this cool stuff we've learned. But like what we learned was that there's no way to do it yeah. <laughs> or that everybody's absolutely clueless just like we are, but no one's, no one wants to admit it because if you got a CCIE, clearly you did something right. Therefore you could say, this is how you get a CCIE. What you really meant to say was, this is how I got a CCIE. Mm. Results may vary. <laughs> mm. you know there's no disclaimer. You know what else is behind that question too is, you know, I guess everybody comes from a different background, but like, you know, I, I was raised by cops and carpenters. Like nobody in my family was, you know, I, I mean, how do you say this and not like, but you know, nobody was like uber successful and had, you know, a lot of money in a big house. And like, it, it just, I don't know. My memories were like struggles. Right. So when I talk to people who are succeeding, it's almost like, you know, I wasn't raised by a pack of wolves, but I'm asking like, well, okay. Yeah, it kind of sounds like it. Well, but no, I wasn't. I mean, my, fa my family were, were rapid, wonderful. Were they? My family were wonderful people, but, uh, you know, unless you want to be a cop or a carpenter, which I don't, you know, so I'm talking to technology professionals who are succeeding and doing well and maybe getting more certs than I am. And I'm like, okay, I want to know how you did that because that's not my point of reference. That's not my past. That's not my social circle that, you know, I grew up in this new world in this new community. It's like, all right, guys, mm -hmm. teach me. How do I, just because I'm in my forties, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm doing the best I can. Like 50% you know, of the time I know what I'm doing. The rest of it, I'm like, ah, 
I, I mean, I'm know. I'm I'm also with you right there. My parents yeah. split up when I was like 11 or 12. I was six. And my mom started over. She actually went to college after they split up. Right. And it was really, really freaking grueling and brutal. Yep. And if it weren't for the Louisiana TOPS program, Louisiana has a program where above average students, just above average, not great students, they can go to college in state for basically free. The tuition is free. Whoa. So you pay for your food and room and board, but that's it. So like my college, like whole, all four years was like 12 grand. Like it was, wow. it was so Amazing. yeah, I don't know why more states don't do this thing, but Louisiana yeah. got to figure it out. And guess what it did? It retained me in the state too. So huge nice. economic impact. But the kicker there is like, I came up in a cir- a similar circle or a similar situation. My first job was pulling ethernet cable in banks and hospitals with Same. people who said things that if I repeated, I'd go to jail. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. It was it was rough. And and then I came out of college with the wrong degree at the wrong time. And I starved and it was awful. And we talked about all this in the podcast. So I'm going to stop there. But like, I'm with you. There was a hard part to figuring out how people did it. And now the entire world is flipped upside down again. And all of our routines that got us to this point are now stopped. And we got to figure it over again. We got to do it all over again and figure it out. Now we're trying to come together and be like, how are you doing it now? And I, yeah. I, I really appreciate that side of the struggle. And that's, right, my so- new, that's my new question, Knox, is like what you said earlier, is how do you have a job and have a wife and have kids and you both have careers and you're trying to, you know, so that's like been my new question. Because I had an awful day today. I was, up, I was up at four for a maintenance window. I worked like a dog all day. Mm-hmm. My wife carried the, you know, the... It was just, it was a crazy day. And it's like, if I talk to somebody like you, like, well, how are you doing it? And the fact that you split between morning and afternoon, like, okay, cool. That's something I can try because our lives have been turned upside down. It's mm-hmm. like, how do we navigate it's this new world? It's easy until something happens in the afternoon. Well, right. And then right. it's like, right. how do I respond? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I just have to tell people like, you'll just have to wait till tonight or tomorrow. And and yeah. that's been hard to do, but that's also just been, that. I mean, there's nothing you can do about at this point. That's just what we live in. But because of these conversations, that also helps each other, you know, like yep. talking to people, hearing their stories and how they're doing it. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. So we've been we've been going on for a while. Let's wrap up with one big question. How has your life changed? How has your career changed? And how has your life personally changed since launching the podcast? AJ, you go first. Wow. Um so since starting the podcast, I passed my CCNP. And that has given me a whole boatload of confidence that I've been missing for the last 18 months. <laughs> so, All right, um, earmuffs, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the Andy. Show again. I'm sorry. Taking him out. <laughs> All right, so AJ, how did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> AJ, you got kids, right? You have, a, you have yeah, kids? Yeah. How did you do it? Yeah, What's wrong kids. with me? You got a wife, kids. right? I'm an imposter. Yeah. How, did, how did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it's been really incredible to hear from from so many people, you know, reaching out on LinkedIn, on Twitter, uh, like, hey man, like the the podcast is incredible. Like I can relate so much. It's just it's really eye opening. It's so nice to hear that like other people struggle with this stuff too. And that's exactly what I wanted them to hear. Uh, and, and so far, the podcast is having the effect that I wanted it to have. I wanted it to bring people closer together in a time where we have to be so far apart. And even after things go back to whatever normal is going to look like, I want to keep doing this podcast. That's not going to stop. Yeah. yeah. I think we're going to have new conversations. Absolutely. Once life goes back to normal, like, how, yeah. like life won't actually be back to normal. It'll just be different again. We, yeah. We're right. in normal now. Right. Right. It's just different. Now there's going to be a new normal whenever it happens. So I, I would love to hear those conversations. It's good to hear that, man. And congrats on the CCNP. I I love following that. That was really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. Aaron, uh, how... Oh, sorry. Keep going, man. No, 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 no. no. It's just uh, incredible. So, you know, we, we talk about posting failures and stuff like that. And, and I posted every single fail, every single time. A lot of people help rally me to keep me want to, to keep going. And, and the day that I posted, you know, I passed my design exam. I, I completed CCNP Enterprise. That about broke my Twitter. Uh, and my phone, and um, it was it was really humbling. It was incredible that you know so many people were watching and 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 that happy for me when when I you know passed. And so I and, try to pass that on. When I see another pass, I I make sure I drop into people's DMs, congratulate them. And, and it's really cool because like you, you're right. And to another point that I think Andy was making earlier is like this new world of networking that we live in now 
isn't just routing and switching anymore. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, okay, so hang on. Tony E, I've got it pulled up here. Tony E tweeted earlier today, every time I open Twitter, everybody knows Tony E, right? And we all saw this tweet. We all saw this yeah. tweet too, but I go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> every time I open Twitter, I'm completely overwhelmed by all the stuff I need to learn. Am mm-hmm. I the only one? There's so many people doing so many cool projects. How can I keep up? I think imposter syndrome is creeping up on me. This is coming from a CCIE and it's almost verbatim what we've just spent like the last half hour talking about. And I agree with them because my comment to him was, yeah, DevOps. DevOps is now Python and Ansible and Jenkins and Chocolatey and PowerShell and Salt and Puppet and Chef and Nornir and PyETS and Kubernetes and Azure and AWS and Travis CI and Terraform and the TIG stack. It all works. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's it. If you let software developers take over, this is your world now. Yeah. They're just going to have a different yeah. app or a different <laughs> stack for every single tiny little thing that yeah. happens. And... Mm. This is what I think I said this on the podcast, but like JavaScript can do everything, but maybe it shouldn't. So <laughs> like that's, that's this, but I mean, yeah, like we've got to rein some of this stuff, this craziness in because it is overwhelming, even for the experts in the world. So I, I to the original point, like AJ, that's a huge accomplishment. And uh, to be able to tackle Encore, which covers so many broad aspects and then go into the design exam too. So congrats to you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Aaron, what have you personally or professionally gained or grown or stayed the same since launching the podcast? Um, you know, uh, so since no one reaches out to me to, to, <laughs> to say that we've been helping, um, I'm you living vicariously. Me, <laughs> Thank you, Andy. I've been living vicariously. I, I get my role here, you know. I somehow promoted myself to like MC, but just so everybody knows in the background, I went to school for radio broadcasting. So I sort of like quasi volunteered myself. You know what I mean? It's just more natural for me. So anyway, that uh, blew my mind when I asked you to come do the podcast with me and you're just like, dude, I have a communications degree. I was like, what? Uh, yeah. I think I'm yeah. a better person and I had no idea. Yeah. Totally. Uh, so yeah, I used to be on college radio's best WLCA. And by the way, don't <laughs> ever talk like that. If you're on the radio, that's a huge no, no. Um, what I would say that I've learned the most is, is actually, since we're doing a video, this is really uh, topical. You could see everything behind me, my bed, my closet. I live in a studio is where I'm getting with this. So I have about a thousand square feet, but it's all one room. There's no separation. What you're seeing here, these are only about seven feet high and the ceilings are about 15 feet high. Um, So whatever you say or do in here will carry. With that being said, I dedicate a lot of time to this podcast, like after work, just like all the rest of these guys do. Right. And it like takes time from our families. My family is only two people, just me and my wife. Um, but when you live in a studio that becomes very different mm-hmm. and this is like a COVID thing too, because she's actually my coworker and actually I'll show you guys at home too. Well, since we're all like looking, my coworker sits right there, uh, mm-hmm. right over that little plant right there where you can see that door open. And so, all day, every day, we share basically a cube. Um, and so for th- for me to be doing this, and it takes like basically silence, ideally I would be doing this in a soundproof room <laughs> so you couldn't hear anything else, which means that she just has to be silent, right? It doesn't have to be, but she does because she cares. So for me, what I've learned uh, from doing There's this- There's a sacrifice on her part. Absolutely, because Andy touched on it a little bit in the content creation part, and, and you are the king of this, Knox. I will give you- I will pass the throne to you. Uh, but yes, because what I, what I think people don't understand is the same thing that we, t- we talked about with the CCIE. Like, how did you do it? The, the tip of the iceberg is somebody putting a YouTube video out, a podcast, or starting a Discord channel. What you don't see is all the stuff that we're doing in the background. Andy was up at four in the morning for a maintenance window, right? AJ, you know, pre-COVID, he's driving to a customer appointment in freaking Connecticut or something, right? And like mm-hmm. me, I'm I'm traveling, I'm flying to like Houston or Sacramento or whatever, and then I'm coming home and I would be trying to do this. And my wife, I share space. She has things she likes to do as well. So, to put a nice pretty bow on it, really, what I've learned the most is that if you're uncomfortable and it seems like there's a lot of obstacles that are in the way, whether that be you know, your living situation, kids, you know, your current uh, financial situation, do whatever's uncomfortable and it, it'll, it'll work out. Mm. Are we really going to let Dan get away without talking about a solar wind shirt? 
No, we, we we actually made fun of him before we talked to you today because <laughs> why did I wear this shirt? <laughs> We've been in an hour and ten minutes before talking about solar winds. Oh my god. It's I mean vendor swag is always accepted. Yeah. I remember like pure storage, they sell like these they give these bright purple polos and I always we bought pure storage appliances at my last job and they never gave me one of those dang polos. <laughs> And that's all I want. I don't want the stickers. They gave me Dude, stickers. I don't want them. AJ's got the uh, the no blinky blinky polo on over there. That's I don't right. Know if you saw that's that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that. that's sweet. Episode. Yeah. yeah Look, it was your storage. If you're watching, I'm happy to do some training content for you. Just send me an appliance and a polo. He wants a polo. I'll send you the appliance back. <laughs> Not the polo. <laughs> yeah, you won't get the polo back. Do you want a sweated in Louisiana polo? Yeah, you don't because... want that swamp polo. No, you don't. <laughs> it's just, I'll boil crawfish in it'll be ruined forever. All right, Dan. Oh, so what have what have you personally gained or professionally gained from doing this podcast? Yeah, so for me it's it's kind of what I was saying earlier. You know, the personal thing is the push. The push from, you know, <clears throat> they had a branding episode, a self branding episode mm-hmm. early on. And like they they have been pushing me and pushing me. Like it's been it's kind of turned into a joke about like, Dan, you gotta get a webcam. Dan, you gotta get a webcam. Dan, get a logo, get a logo, <laughs> get a site, you know, get it a Twitter handle, you know, and all that stuff. Um and that you know, slowly and slowly I've like, okay, I'll I'll go to Twitter. Okay, now let me start working on a logo, which I've started now. Uh, and then, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and you hear uh, it first. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then working on like, okay, so you know, I got the Twitter, and then I was like, you know what, I, I'm I'm labbing HSRP right now. Maybe I should make That's a little awesome. video of yep. me configuring HSRP and show how like if you if one of the routers goes down, you know, the traffic goes right back over, but. The, the point of that is if I share that with somebody, maybe they see just the, the, the simple, you know, me typing in the commands and whatnot, and it triggers something for them. Uh, I, I just don't know. It's just, I've been pushed so much by joining this podcast and joining this crew here. And I, I owe a lot to them because of that. And I'm get like I said earlier, I'm getting out of my comfort zone and it feels freaking crazy. And I'm scared to death, but <laughs> I'm doing it, you know, full sin. The, the the first 40 videos I ever did were some of the hottest garbage ever. And I was like so out of my <laughs> comfort you. zone. Thank but, you. But you know, like, okay, so here's here's the crazy thing. Like I looked, it was back at my previous employer called IT Inspired. And I was like, I was watching all these CBT nuggets. And I was like, just, you know what? I'm going to get Camtasia. And like, I'm not going to upgrade any of my hardware. I didn't mm-hmm. get a good mic. I didn't get like a camera or anything. I recorded everything in MS Paint, and nice. I just like recorded the full screen. Didn't like like it was it was just like as far as like high quality training goes, this was not it. I uploaded it to YouTube, and like their videos have like thirty or forty or fifty thousand likes and and comments and everything. And like my com like my channel like has like four hundred on a good day. So it's like. I don't know what I did back then, but when I was out of my comfort zone, that was when stuff was hottest. So keep doing what you're doing, man, because that's yeah. you're, you're striking gold and you don't even know it. Well, oh, I yeah. really appreciate that. So I'll keep, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep going. Keep so going, and, and, and just so you know, um, I alluded to it earlier because we're not going to talk about it. But Dan part time is a professional videographer for weddings in the Tennessee area. And I'm not plugging him right now. I'm just I just want to point out that. The stuff he is making is top notch stuff here. Um, like I'm not joking. Like it's it's like I would pay for that, right? Like that's that's a good stuff. But basically, we had no idea he was doing it until like three days ago. The guy didn't have a webcam. We're like, how does a guy without a webcam also be a part time professional he's, videographer? He's what is that? Is that the MXL 990 mic? Like that's a high this quality be- mic. Yeah. Uh, it's the Rode NT. Rode. It's, oh, it's Rode. Okay. Yeah, I it's mean, it's so NT1A. High quality mic. It's yeah. an NT1A. Yeah. Classic yeah. studio mic. Well, okay. So, just to give a little background about the webcam, the reason I didn't have a webcam was because, uh, you know, COVID tax happened, and these webcams are going for like stupid yeah. prices, and mm-hmm. I, I'm also a cheapo <laughs> on certain <laughs> things, and uh, and yeah, that's the reason why I was hoping to get a capture card. So that I can use mm-hmm. my professional camera f- 
for this type stuff because he's I, a videographer. I just exactly. saw you can, the Cam Link 4K just hit you, hit Amazon. What what are like they going last for week. right now though? That's what They're I like have. 200, 150 or two hundred bucks. One hundred twenty nine bucks. Yeah, one hundred twenty nine. Okay. Yep. So oh. I got I got the Cam Link 4K and then I got an HDMI switcher, mm-hmm. so I can switch between whatever goes into the 4, so I can switch between my Raspberry Pi to my camera to. Okay. Mm. And then I use OBS Studio to do every, or the Stream Deck here to do oh, all the different okay. scenes. So it'll change cameras, it'll change mics, and I can turn around all over the place. I got that's bananas. Just, but yeah. that, that's just a little backstory on why the whole webcam thing was a, a big it's, joke. It's <laughs> so eventually I will upgrade to a capture card and then I'll. We're just teasing you, bro. It's camera. cool. But, it's cool. You'll be okay. Uh, You'll be okay. Good. Just stay on the <laughs> doubt, Dan. You'll be okay. <laughs> I'll be all right. We're in the trust tree. Yeah. <laughs> well, get the capture card and then see if Newegg will retweet you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> All right, hey, Andy, many, what how many followers was that? that? They have 484,000 followers God, that they, yeah. they retweeted my Red Dead Redemption, red spelled incorrectly, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, okay, uh, Andy, bring it home. Tell us what you have personally or professionally gained since you've started this podcast. <sighs> I'm trying to think of something great and the only thing I can think of, and this is the God's honest truth. Before I met these fine folks and got involved with this, um, I've been listening to tech podcasts for a while and I thought, you know what? Someday I hope that I have, you know, something valuable enough to say to be a guest on a podcast. I've had this thought and believe it or not, it was a career goal of mine. Like, Someday I want to be a guest on, I swear to God, I want to be on a tech podcast through some twist of fate, you know, chasing my passion, doing what I'm good at. We hooked up online. AJ and I were both trying to knock out the NP and, you know, became fast friends. He's okay. You want to study and study group, you know, and here we are. So I wanted to be a guest on a podcast and now I'm a, now I'm a co-host. So you know, I, I don't know how else I could better put it on, you know, what this has done for me. No, I, I mean, it, achievement of your personal goal, like, and that's a achievement personal, and surpass. I just wanted to be a guest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a freaking co-host in this thing, man. Like, it's I mean, crazy. it's something that's very personal to you. And I think that's really, really cool that you've been able to do that. And yeah. I also like the fact, I mean, like, let's be real. Like all of y'all bring something very real and honest to the table and different. Right, and different, exactly, yeah. and I think Andy's bringing something to the table. Like he he brings his struggles to the table sometimes, but they're struggles that everybody else is experiencing, but nobody else is talking about. And that's nope. you you know when we talk like they, they, we, all of these things are always said out there in public. Like it's okay to talk about these things, and then nobody ever does. I and just so, want to tell our listeners someday I'm going to have all the certs, and there's going to yes. be no struggles. <laughs> And you're going to have to find somebody else to come and complain about how hard things are. (laughs) (laughs) We'll be, we'll be replacing you with Knox on that day. But it's not, and it's not like, it's not even complaining. Uh, Like that's like, if it was complaining, it'd be like, man, man, but it's not like this. No, but he's like genuine and you, and you can hear it, right? Like he's genuinely just wants to know, like (laughs) it's like watching the food network and they, they just (laughs) skipped an entire scene and Andy's like, Wait, good, no, no, go back. What I saw you. There has to be flour in that. Look at the way it's settling. There has to be flour. Everything's yeah. pre-chopped. They have all their portions out. They don't show you any of that stuff. He's so no, he's so he's so honest and genuine about it. Like, that's one of my favorite parts about this is that like, yes, our community is different, but like it randomly, geographically, we are all spread out almost perfectly, right? So that you get like all these different like kind of tastes of the United States when it comes Wait, to tell like people being where there. you are. Okay. So I'll just do it quickly for everybody so that they can hear. So I'm in San Diego, AJ's in Vermont. Andy, if you couldn't tell is in the Philadelphia area because he used the word John quite a bit. And Dan is in the greater <laughs> Nashville area because that's how you would say it. Um, but yeah, we're, you know, we got Midwest guy, like South Midwest guy. I got some East Coast guys, but like even more extreme East Coast, which is AJ, because that's a different part of the East Coast. A lot of people don't talk about like not big city East Coast, right? Like Appalachia. Is Vermont considered New England? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Um, And then I'm like the surfer kid, right? So we're just all over the place. But on top of that, 
uh, like our personalities almost match those geographical areas perfectly. Dan has this slow southern draw to him, right? And he's got that accent, right? AJ's very easygoing. You know, you could tell that like he's kind of like the like the ringleader. He doesn't really have to say much, but we all just kind of like know. It's very um, super troopers. <laughs> and, right. <laughs> <laughs> Andy's really just waiting till I get to him to see how I describe him. I can tell right now. <laughs> can this be over? <laughs> Andy gets angry about kids getting on his lawn, you know, because that's what you do uh, when you're old. Um, yeah, and for some reason, like it just fits, right? Like I'm loud, I'm obnoxious. You can't give me to shut up. But like, if we were all like me, it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Just conversely, if we were all like Dan, it wouldn't work. This podcast would be three hours long because we talk so slow. You know, like I'm kidding. Knox, um, in my defense, you, but, Aaron doesn't have a lawn. He's in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> if he Beat spent Sam. on his, if he spent on his lawn, what I spent on my lawn, he'd be yelling at the kids to get off the of San Diego lawn. I get it. Right. I get it. I get it. That's right. Yeah, but that, but the the idea is there, right? Like so so geographically, but personality, and like there's no other circumstance where you can have this many people on one phone call without everybody like having their spot and i'm not saying that everybody has to have equal airtime like because there's times where i'm not even on the show right and aj is doing the exact same thing i would do right and you can't even tell like just no difference whatsoever other than me just like not saying random stuff the whole time mm -hmm. that's the only difference so like it fits we are a sum of its parts just like the discord channel is we're just a small sample size of that and we represent that community i think extremely well is basically mm -hmm. what i was getting at there mm -hmm. And now you're a part of it, so I, welcome. I mean, yeah, I mean, just, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. We left the light on for you. We saved you a seat right at the front. <laughs> well, look. I mean, I, I'm, I think we're we can wrap up because we've we've done an hour and a half, and that was like way more than we were supposed to do. But <laughs> whoops. Uh, but but I mean, the, that's that's kind of it. This is still this goes back to the original point that this is y'all just break down walls with your honesty. And now we can just have real conversations. And that's what all of your podcasts, all of the episodes are, are just real conversations. Like it, it's almost as if you got like noise filtering and you filmed the whole thing or you recorded the whole thing at a bar after work, <laughs> drinking, right. you know, drinking a beer, just talking about you know, the journey, talking about, you know, which we would today. love to do, by the way. Yeah, I, I was mean, about to say, uh, yeah, that's on yeah. Our agenda. <laughs> art, of, art of network engineering fest. The, the festival, the, the conference will happen someday. Absolutely. On the, it's on the, we've talked about this before. Once, you know, you talked about the new normal, but hey, once we're out in the wild again, good boy, don't let us out because <laughs> if, if you're in that Discord channel and, and, and we're all at Cisco Live or something, you know, and yeah. we'll, we'll make sure that everybody gets together. We can at least get a big group picture together and high five yeah. each other, you know, cheers, do all that. So that's these these are the real conversations that real people are having when they're not you know social media warriors pretending pretending to be something that they're not and knox yeah. works we're, we're accessible so like you know if there's somebody out there listening to this and interested and they want to like reach out to one of us i mean there's the discord channel they can go to art of network engineering.com all of our contact info is in there you can email any one of us or the group but we we are accessible you can reach out to us we will respond I think that's important yep. for right like here. if you want to ask andy like how he got his job in the financial vertical and want some insight on that ping him i'm sure he'll he's an open book right like he would love to do that you just heard the guy he loves helping people so just just even stuff like that yep anything we're and, here and i mean and all of course all of the social media outlets too where you know y'all are always present too so yep. um yeah there you have it uh everybody that is this is the Art of Network Engineering podcast, and it is honestly one of the, the best things that has happened to a lot of people, um, myself included, because listening to it is something that's so incredibly relatable and honest, and it's a support group that I didn't even realize that I needed, but it's there. And with all of the stuff that's changing and with all of the stuff that is happening around us and the constant stream of information that we get that might belittle us or it might make us feel separated from the world, this is the podcast that brings it all back together as well as the Discord channel. So my strongest advice to all of you out there who may be watching this and have made it to the end of this video, uh, please, please use your favorite podcast platform, Spotify, iTunes, 
all of them, they're, they're everywhere now these days. Uh, and just listen, just start with episode one and trust me, you're going to have a great time listening to it. So that's what I have to say. Any last words from y'all or we can sign off. Thank you, Thank you so much, Knox. Thank you so much. Thanks Appreciate for listening. It. All right, y'all. We'll see you in the next one.